let's go build it. Hi guys, welcome to my workshop. I'm Joshua Orchard here today for Grace and Hobby. Really excited today because I get to assemble their B-26 bomber offered from Dynam. It's really exciting. I love this airplane. There's a really interesting history around it. And along the way, I'm going to share with you some of my building tips and tricks to have a longer lasting model that's going to fly more reliably and safely. So as we get into the build, keep in mind for those side comments. Look forward to having you in my workshop today, so let's get started. So the first thing that I usually do when I have an ARF arrive in the mail is number one, get excited and open the box. From there, the first thing that I do is make sure that I have the instructions. The instructions for this model come in two forms. There's a small sheet of paper and a rather large one front and back. So it's important to keep these things. There is some really important information on this. Uh, number one is the center of gravity location as well as your control surface deflections. After that I go through the box and I make sure that per the instructions they usually have a parts list that tells you that what's in the box, what you should have, and so you want to make sure that you have all of those pieces. So first, before I even take the model out, I go through the accessory boxes and make sure that all of those parts are in there. That way, if there's anything missing, I can contact Grace and Hobby and use their customer service to either get replacements or, or get the parts that weren't included in the kit. The next thing that I do is I go through the model very carefully before I even take it out of the box. I inspect it for damage. I look for areas where the foam might have been crunched. Uh, I look for imperfections in the model that maybe might not make it safe. I also go over any of the hardware like any attached ailerons or elevators or anything like that that might be broken that may have happened in shipping to you. You want to make sure that these are set so that you know that you can address them with maybe a little bit of glue. Dynam does provide some glue in the kit, but perhaps it's maybe not the correct glue for this situation. So you want to plan ahead and formulate a plan before you get started building. So I have got the airplane out of the box and upon inspection while it was in the box I noticed something a little bit funny. One of the flaps on the bottom of the fuselage seemed a little bit loose. Upon further inspection you can see that the hinge for the flap is separating a little bit from the flap itself. So I'm going to have to go back and make sure that this is glued securely. If it were to lose adhesion during flight that might cause some pretty adverse drag that may make the airplane uncontrollable. I've never flown this before, so make sure that you check these things over very carefully. Safety first. Another thing that I noticed that as I have the airplane turned over, there's a little bit of rash right there at the aft end of the nacelle. It's not major, but could use a little bit of touch-up. It may just have been from the contents inside the box shifting around during shipping, but again, this is minor. It's on the bottom side, but something to take note. There's no breaks or, or uh, disconnected glued joints, so I think it's pretty safe to fly. I've taken off the cowls for the motors and inspected the motors to make sure that they're secure. There's no wobble, there's no creaking or sounding of metal rubbing when I spin the motors. So I think we have good motors and nothing is adversely wrong there. One of the other things that I've discovered here is that these guns are not entirely glued in. It looks like there used to be some glue that secured them, so I'm going to have to reapply some there so that these aren't jostling around. Not to mention it'll look a lot better with two guns evenly set out in the tail. Nice stinger for a display. I really like the rotating gun turret on the top of the fuselage. That's pretty fun if you want to just move it around for a static display. I think I'd probably fly it with this position, but maybe we can remove it and put it on a servo. Might have to find out. Maybe for another video. 
So overall, I'm pretty happy with how things have shipped to me. This should be a pretty safe model to fly with minimal, minimal work to make sure that it is in the trouble spots that I've identified already. So let's go ahead and get started with the instructions. To start off on the tail, you insert the horizontal stabilizer, which only goes one way, into the slot that's ready for it. There are two molded pieces of foam that fit into holes and you insert one single screw all the way to the aft and put it in place. The screwdriver that's supplied with the kit does not reach down far enough but I had a screwdriver that was long enough to do that. Prior to installing the vertical stabilizer I put the screws in their corresponding holes just to make it easier to manipulate the fuselage around on my workbench. Then it's a matter of installing the vertical stabilizer and securing with the screws. You can do it the other way, but I found this way to be the easiest. With the vertical in place, go ahead and tighten your screws. Try not to over tighten as you are screwing into plastic. Just screw in until you feel that the screw is snug and secure. I screwed these down evenly, front and back, front and back, just to make sure that they're tightened evenly. Once the screws are in, make sure that everything is secure and that nothing moves around. And I deflected my control surfaces to make sure that the foam along the hinge line is not too stiff for the servos. I prefer to use Gorilla Glue, and the glue that's supplied with the kit, I don't know what it is, so I don't know if it's going to hold up to heat or other weather expansions, and I have a lot of humidity in my area. So I just take the Gorilla Glue and apply a dab to each prong of the control horn. With that, I insert the control horn into the molded holes in each control surface. Then when, once the glue is dry and secure, you can trim away the excess glue that has expanded with a knife or just pull it away with a pair of tweezers. Then prior to installing each wing panel you need to install the main spar along the main wing. I just eyeballed it for center and it can be adjusted as you install the main wings. So I'm about to put on the first wing panel and the first thing that I notice is there's no labels on these servo connectors. Now the light is pretty straightforward as it's only got a two pin and it's pretty easy to line up the uh, the, the pin, the corresponding pin at the wing root. But I went ahead and verified that the, in relation to the forward leading edge of the wing, that the leading wire is in fact for the aileron servo. So again, leading edge, aileron, then flap. So after undoing the little tie thing, it's a lot easier to figure out what's going on here. If you look at the leading edge here and the way that the wing plugs in, those wires are together in the same channel in the wing as well as at the wing root. So that's how it goes together. Okay, so a little quick tip for a couple of you people that may be new with ARFs. You have these servo connectors that Sometimes you may want to make sure that they don't come apart and that's really if you're going to leave the airplane assembled all the time. For those of you who have smaller vehicles, it may not be in your best interest to have the wings on all the time because it may not fit in your car. This airplane after all does have a 59 inch wingspan so it's pretty big and it may get dinged up getting in and out of a smaller vehicle. So for those who do want to assemble it, I would just use a piece of scotch tape or even uh, electrical tape, maybe even a little bit of shrink tube 
around these connectors to make sure that the connectors don't come apart over time. With electric airplanes, you don't have a whole lot of vibration, but it is still a possibility. Other than that, it's a matter of stuffing the wires in, slipping the wing on, and securing with two screws. Uh, <laughs> so while I was trying to slip the wing on, I realized that I had the wrong wing on the wrong side. So let's try this again. So real quick, uh, ran into a problem with the uh, servo connector on this one wing. The wires pulled out of the terminals, and so I've removed the terminals, and I'm going to solder them back in place. Now I did notice that the uh, the clamps around here that hold the, the wire in place, they weren't very tight, so I slipped it back in. And let me just show you real quickly how we're going we're gonna to solder this back. So I'm going to get a little solder prepped on the tip of my iron. Just need a little bit. And then I take some flux and just smear it, melt it around a little bit. And then just a little bit of solder to hold it in place. And we're done. So once I've done the repairs, I've put solder on both of these and they're ready to go back into. And the reason that I noticed it was I was pulling on these as a secure fitting while it was in the uh, receiving end and these two wires just came right out. So the way you put it back in, make sure you've got the correct orientation, brown, red, orange in this case, it would be white in other cases, uh, or black for the brown. So then the red always goes in the middle and make sure this little tab here it's very tiny and it faces up and as you slide it in you'll feel it click with the plastic tab so that it doesn't come out if you have it turned wrong it'll come out and then you do the other one the same way and we have a repaired servo okay so this is one of the most critical things that I think you can possibly do for your model not all the time are they very thorough about your landing gear. The worst thing you can probably have happen is you take off, it's a maiden flight, and something happens like your wheel falls off. Uh, the best thing that I can tell you to do is check all of your collets. The, come, the kit comes with an Allen key, so go through and make sure they're tight. Now, I tried to loosen and then tighten, so it seems like this kit is provided with some Loctite on those, which is excellent but you want to make sure that they're super tight so that your wheels don't fall off. One other quick tip I can tell you is uh, you go to the hobby store and you go to the Pinewood Derby section for like Cub Scouts and you get some graphite powder and you just squirt a little bit in there, roll it around, helps reduce a bunch of that rolling resistance and hopefully will make the rolling more even on both sides. You can see this one rolls pretty freely and this one is kind of stuck so I have to work on that a little bit so it's not trying to screw with me on the on the runway it's just a safety precaution I highly recommend that you do it alternatively if you can't find that any of that and you want to just go in a pinch get some 220 grit sandpaper and a regular graphite pencil and just draw on the sandpaper and then you can use uh, like your tip of your finger and sort of sprinkle it inside maybe you can have in your paint supplies a little eyedropper or bulb pipe pattern that'll work just as well okay guys so we're getting to the home stretch I went ahead and I made the repair to that servo wire that lead and I also uh, made the repair to the flaps that I identified earlier in the video uh, just used a little bit of Gorilla Glue and it, it firmed up just fine uh, I went ahead and I connected the push rods to the tail surfaces and the way that it comes you have plenty of, of push rod available but you can't access the servos inside the fuselage uh, unless I suspect that if you you have to move the wing um, you have to screw the little clevis connectors 
into the rod to get to the right length. So make sure that your rudder is perfectly straight and in line with the stabilizer as well as the horizontal uh, stabilizer being in line with the elevators. So you want to make sure they're as even as possible so just screw it in or screw it out, whatever it needs to do. And I use the middle hole of the control horn as a starting place. And it's fairly safe. We'll, we'll make sure that we get the correct throws programmed into the radio before we fly. I also went ahead and installed the receiver into the airplane uh, to make sure that all the servos were functioning, uh, got the, the, the motors turning, and the motors turn, the tops of them go toward the fuselage. Uh, the lights are working, the landing gear took a little bit of finagling, you may have to fiddle a little bit with your endpoints on your transmitter. For those who are wondering, uh, you may want to check carefully what your receiver specifications are as the uh, throttle channel is uh, labeled as number three. The aileron channel is labeled as one. And the elevator channel is labeled as number two. So just something to note. So I had to kind of play around with that. So not exactly JR, not exactly Futaba, I mean, just fiddle around with it. Everything else is pretty standard. Four is your rudder, uh, five is your landing gear, and six is your flaps. Let's see, other things of note. Oh, the nose landing gear. Inside, uh, there is some linkages, and I noticed that the linkage for the steering on the nose gear was loose so I had to remove the servo horn in order to tighten that. Took a little bit of finessing here and there, a little bit finicky but nothing too terribly difficult. Alright so one of the last things I want to show you guys is that when you install the propellers you have two prop adapters that go on the ends of the motors. You want to make sure that your propellers are going to spin in the opposite direction that you tighten the prop nut. So on this adapter you have a propeller spinning in this direction, but you tighten in the opposite direction. So as the propeller spins up, it's going to tighten the propeller down more. It's a safety thing, so make sure you do it properly. You'll have to do the kit comes with these two little pilots that they're okay, they're a little cheesy, but they'll work. They're about the right size. There are other options out there, such as uh, 3D printable pilots that you can paint. Uh, maybe another hobby store or even Grayson offers them. You just want to have basically the shoulder up in order to fit this cockpit area and then glue it in. Um, one of the things that you're going to have trouble with is probably keeping the canopy glued on. What I would like to do on these foamy kits is use some aluminum ducting tape and what you do is you put some on where the canopy is going to fit and it will pull the paint up a little bit. If you're having trouble in some spots more than others, when in doubt, sandpaper. Sandpaper will rough it up nicely. You'll also want to take the sandpaper and do just inside the lip of the canopy all the way around. What this does is gives a little bit more surface area, even though it doesn't seem like it. It is quite a bit for the glue. And it gives the glue something to grab onto and is not going to give over time. Again, you can use the glue that's included in the kit, but uh, for, for canopies, I prefer to use Formula 560 canopy glue. It takes forever to dry, but I know that it's reliable. It's not going to melt in the heat. I know that it's going to keep the canopy on very securely in flight. So that's my recommendation there. The kit also comes with some decals. You've got a nice instrument panel that you can put inside the cockpit. You've got uh, other danger ones you can put on the model. There's also uh, stars and other insignia stuff you can put on the rest of the airplane. Uh, you can use reference pictures to do that. You can go creative or you could do nothing at all or give the whole thing a paint job. Uh, it's really up to you and I think that's really cool that uh, Dynam did the kit this way because I really like to customize my models. Yeah, the, the other thing you're wanna, gonna wanna glue in is this radome. Um, so this goes on the bottom. 
the blunt end, not the pointy end. This is the leading edge, not that end. There's no instruction on how to glue this in, uh, in, in the instructions other than glue it in. You'll also have your your front nose where the, the gun is in the kit and so you glue the gun in and then you slide this over top. Again, you're going to want to lightly sand just on the edge around the lip here and on the foam on the nose of the model. Put on the glue, let it dry. Nice thing about Formula 560 is it goes on white and then when it's dry it's clear. So hold it on with a piece of masking tape that's not quite so sticky that's going to pull off the paint. Um, and then on the tail there are also there's also this little piece of plastic that goes on there as well for the tail gunners. So make sure you glue all of these in, make sure everything is nice and secure. And one more thing I really need to show you guys. Setting your control surface deflections is pretty easy. I just use a ruler and here I'm setting the elevator control surface throws at 15 to 12 millimeters and it's exactly the same for the rudder, 15 to 12 millimeters. the aileron deflections, the instructions say 15 to 20 millimeters. And that seems reasonable at this scale. The center of gravity is recommended to be 70 to 75 millimeters from the leading edge of the wing at the root, right by the fuselage. Check it carefully and make sure it's right. Yes! We finished building the B-26 Marauder. I'm really excited that I was able to do that with you guys. I'm glad that I was able to also show with you some of my other tips and tricks along the way for some of these ARFs. They are uh, a little bit tricky sometimes. You want to make sure that they're completely safe to fly, and we've done that. And I'm pretty sure that you guys are going to enjoy this model. I look forward to doing a maiden flight on this one, and I look forward to sharing it with you too. It's a little rainy right now, so I'm not going to do it today but I will share that with you now. Welcome to my flying field. I'm here today with the B-26 Marauder from Dynam. And this was a kit given to me from Grayson Hobby. And today I'm gonna to do a maiden flight on it. I've done all my safety checks. I've made sure that the control surfaces are operating in the correct direction. I've done a range check as well as a taxi test. Everything's good to go, so let's get her in the air. Right away I'm noting that the uh, nose does want to pitch down, which is okay, giving the center of gravity a little bit forward on where it's recommended. Elevator's a little, little on the heavy side for the recommended high rate throws. Aileron's pretty good. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit more air. A little bit more height on this next pass around the field. Do a stall test. Okay, so I'm holding back a little bit. I'm going to ease off the throttle. And it just sort of mushes. No wing drop. And I'm back up to full throttle. Let's get a little more height. And look at what our flaps do. Easing off. And it just seems to slow things down nicely. Gear down. All right, we got all three down. I'm going to set to half flap for my approach. Very predictable. Well, that's a successful maiden. I'm really happy with that flight. There were no really bad tendencies. Although the elevator is a little bit sensitive, I think I'll adjust my rate so that it's not quite so twitchy. Even though I had 60% expo, it still felt a little bit quick on the elevator, so reducing the throws should take a lot of that out. 
Uh, I think I can also move the battery back about another inch and that'll help with the center of gravity. I can also add some further ballast in the tail if I would like, but the recommended center of gravity is very good and I am operating on that first flight a little ahead of that by about half a centimeter. So you guys should be good. The instructions are very straightforward on how to set up your control throws as well as your center of gravity and they're all good. They're operationally good. Um, but uh, yeah, just a little bit of minor things to suit my particular flying needs, but it is a good basic starting point. Had no problems with the retracts. The installation is very solid on my grass runway. So I'm very happy with this airplane. I am sure you guys will be too. And I really appreciate Grace and Hobby for the opportunity to build this airplane for them and to review it. Thanks guys, and I'm Joshua Orchard.